What's up everybody, it's Kat from the Monkey Making Bis Place channel here with the Alestial deck profile. This is the one I will be playing this Friday against Leo's Prism. Uh, this is the deck I was talking about, I believe in the game before, where I found this deck a lot of fun. Originally I thought it was overcomplicated and just boring to play because of the fact that it was just overcomplicated for no reason, but after playing it, it's not as complicated as I thought. It feels like that at first, just because there's a lot of things you have to keep track of, like the white wings, the black wings, the counts. But after a couple games of playing, uh, the lines become pretty easy to figure out, especially uh, this list has been simplified on the black wings end because the main vanguard tutors it, which we'll talk about in a bit. But starting with that, let's start with this ride line. We have the grade zero, it's just a lestial, doesn't really matter. The grade one so the whole gimmick as you can see here when this unit is placed on b bind the top card of your deck that's a lot of what these guys do they'll bind the top card and depending on the grade you either get your white wings ability or your black wings white is odd and black is even so in her instance if you have a white wing when you would ride you would just soul blast instead of discarding or if you are in black all your opponents grade one or less regrets cannot attack this unit so that effect the second one is really good if you go second and the first effect is only good if you go first you can't really control it at that early of the game. You can control it later on, but it's still a pretty good effect if you hit it. Plus, the card will go back to your hand as you'll see later. So the second ability, when the unit is placed on V, choose the card from your binds out, and you put it to the bottom, and then you'll bind a new one. Her white wings is counterblast, and she gets a crit. And her black is when they're in the battle, unit attack. Your opponent can knock all triggers from hand to guardian. Pretty good. It's a good offensive ability, and it puts the card bound back. And this, the main boss, Dress Up Elestial, which is the other original Grade 3, which is right here. So it counts as Persona, right? It has like the same name, essentially, the whole Dress Up mechanic. Um, at the beginning of your main phase, you choose a card from your bind zone and you add it You add it to your hand and then you will bind the top card of your deck. So that's how you can get a card from your bind zones back. As you can see, we can choose what cards we bind. And then her Black Wings ability is on V. You will discard a card from your hand and you will tutor for any Black Wings card in your deck which is really, really good, which is why our grade two slot is all black wing. And as a grade zero we, here we play, that's also a black wing because they're all tutorable. And it's really good because as, as you'll show you in a bit, all the black wing cards are really, really good. And her white wings ability, at the end of the battle is an attack, you will counter bust one and discard a card to search your deck for the original Lestial. You'll write it stand and it'll have a minus one drive. So that's your multi-attack and you might be thinking, oh, how am I supposed to get black and white? That should be impossible. Well, I'll show you later. First, three more Persona Ride, obviously. Persona Ride will win you games, and it's very easy to get Persona Ride in this deck. I'll show you later with a card. And then we play four of the original because you will have to tutor it out of your deck for your multi attack. But going over her effect real quick, at the beginning of your main phase, you will add a card from your bind to your hand, and then White Wings, she'll get plus five in a crit. And on black, your opponents will have minus five on their Vanguard, which is really, really good. Company with this guy because it will mean your opponent has a negative 10 on their board, which is essentially a front trigger. So I don't play fronts in this deck but we'll go over the triggers later. And the most important grade three right here, when she is bound, both abilities are active, both white and black. This is your best grade three, probably not the, I don't wanna say it's the best card, but it's in, it's the most necessary card. It'll allow you to proc both abilities on your main Vanguard, and it's just really good. I recommend four. Uh, you can you could think about maybe cutting a single Lestial, but I will usually go through all four in a game. So I'm always very hesitant to cut her down to three but it is an option if you so choose. Moving on to the grade twos, we're playing for Fennel. All the cards have Ale in the, in the name. Uh, when she's placed on rear, if you have a card with a Lestial that has a Vanguard, can Soul Blast, choose a card from your bind, add it to your hand, and then bind a card from your hand. So that's how you will get her. You're gonna cycle them over and over, and it's tutorable because it's a Black Wings ability. And her ability is rear, when this unit attacks, counter bus one, choose your opponent's grade three or greater Vanguard, and it gets minus five. So, like I said earlier, accompanied by your main vanguard. Well, technically you're not your main vanguard, but the one you'll write into is for your multi-attack. That's a minus 10, so it's really, really good, especially if you persona ride. It's essentially a plus 20. It's pretty insane. Plus, this uh, allows you to choose what card you bind. We play for MAO, and she's black wing, so tutorable. At the end of the battle, this unit attack while boosted. You choose a card from your soul, you add it to your hand, and you put her in the soul. This is how you will recycle your persona rides. Technically, it could be any card in your soul, but more than likely, it'll just be your Persona right because Persona writing is really, really important. It'll make your board huge in comparison, draws you a card, 
Obviously, Persona is really, really good. And then Howling Ballad Fenael. She's Black Wings. When his unit is placed on rear, you Soul Charge one and she gets boost. So, helps her out. And then once she goes into Soul, you can move her to the front. Now you have an attacker. And it's really, really good because it also gives you Soul. This deck does not use a lot of Soul, but if you were interested in using Yuika, that could help you. I just I decided not to play Yuika in this list. I never thought I needed it just because Elasteel will tutor the card out of your deck. So bouncing it back to your hand seems kind of pointless, especially since she throws herself on the soul. She's more than likely gonna die in your next turn if you don't call like another one of her. And this will more than likely die. Like you could bounce her back to your hand, but the fact that we play the full play set, they're all in your deck, they're very safe there. Not really needed to bounce them back to your hand. Moving to the grade ones. We play for Sir Raphael. Uh, she's white wings. Most of our grade ones are white wings. Actually, all the grade ones. Uh, on back row, she will restand when your vanguard is placed. And then on place, you could choose a grade three red card with Lestiel and your drop, and you put it to the bottom of your deck. This will allow you to recycle your original Lestiels, allowing your new Lestiel to get her out of the deck. Really good. I I don't know if you really necessarily need the four, but every time I play, I only ever see the one. So you could probably cut it down the three if you so wish to make room for other cards. But I think she's kind of necessary, but I don't think as a form. I just like her as a form myself. We play probably one of the worst counter chargers in the game. Let's IL, but it's our only counter charger. I can't even read that. There we go. She's white wings at the end of the battle. At the end of this turn, if you row two or more times and you have no face up CB, you can then counter charge one by putting her under soul. That's why I think she's one of the worst in the game. <laughs> because this deck is not like super CB heavy. You will use two a turn. But it's pretty baffling why she has all these restrictions. I don't understand why they made it this way. But it's our only option, so three. I've even considered playing it as a two of. If you want to make room for some Yuikas or whatever would have you. If you want to add a little spicy tech to your build. You don't have to feel bad if you only have two on your list. PGs, obviously. Three regular, one blitz. This is just for the Lewards, the Shiranui's, and these for everybody else. Self-explanatory. And I'm putting this here in the grade 1 slot, even though it's a grade 0. It's another booster. Uh, at the end of the battle, this unit boosted, you return it to your hand. You may, technically, so it's a choice. She's a grade 0, she's 6k, I just I just feel we're personally showing her off with the triggers. But this is really good because it's a recurrable booster, and it protects itself because it returns itself to your hand. So technically, it's also a shield, which is really cool. Uh, Leo showed me this card and the other grade 2 booster. Because, as you saw, the grade 2 black wind that re recurs your persona right needs to be boosted. So having this recurrable booster is just really nice. Plus, you can just throw it anywhere and then throw it back to your hand. Have shield for next turn. It's protected. It's a nice little tool. Of, you don't need more because, again, recurrable. Moving on to the triggers. I like... Uh, lyrical. I was going to say Bermuda. I like the lyrical OT. Uh, some people might play red or blue. That is up to your preference. I just think this OT is better. Because if you hit it early, it'll be proc the rest of the game. But play to your preference. I played three draw because as you saw, we play a lot of grade threes. And this deck, while not necessarily combo heavy, you would like to see certain cards because, for instance, if you want to tutor her out or you want to tutor her out, maybe her, maybe her, just having the cards already in your hand makes your tutoring a lot easier. It removes some of that stress of choice. So I personally like three. Only three because shield is still an issue. Uh, we play eight crit for pressure especially with our second grade three the original lsal that is a potential three damage so it's really cool uh, i don't play the soul crit because again soul is not an issue plus we have a soul charger and if you're really that in need of soul wasting 15k shield i think you're in a bad spot so if you have them use them i have them i just don't think you need them four heals i play vanilla again shield is very important but play to your meta if you notice in your local especially now it's your new lord you might want to play the higher grade heals i just don't like the uh, the option of these not being available to me at all times at 15 but again play to your locals play to the local meta if you're going to a tournament you might know what is going to be viable or not but yeah that is the deck profile as i said this deck is extremely fun it looks complicated on the surface, but as you get through the motions, the play lanes become pretty simple, pretty easy. I highly recommend it. I think it's a little pricey, but if you are a lyrical main or you just want to try something new, something with a little bit more thought to it, not just monkey brain, I recommend this one. 
But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.